Welcome. This is Niching Black Parents and Beyond with Julia Brown. As Julia, I met her a while ago and she is an amazing travel expert, but not only that, her expertise is really exploring or helping her visitors, helping her clients to explore Black Paris, Black Paris and beyond and all the Black heritage travel and culture you can find worldwide. Uh, Julia, I can hear a little bit of echo in the back end. Do you have an option to turn this off? To turn what off? I, I can hear my voice coming okay. in. All right. What would do you, you like have, me to Do you have uh, an earphone or something? Um, I can get an earphone just one second. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Program. Julia, the program is 30 minutes. And right now, I would love to share a little bit about your background. So okay. I put a little, uh, a little bio from your website and just want to share that with our followers that they really see the whole treasure we, we have coming up in the next 30 minutes. Okay, when great. Analyst, when analyst has long guided Julia's professional and personal direction. She was born in England, brought up in Canada, but had a thing, that's funny, for all things French since her teen. Married to a Frenchman and raising two daughters in Paris, her biggest concerns focused on dashing for the metro, finding work and bringing home the right cheese. I can imagine that, for sure. Like oh, every, yeah, that every expat she knew. And then taking a course at the Sorbonne University changed everything. Should the late Professor Michael Fabre, is that how you would pronounce his last um, name? Michel Fabre. Michel Fabre. She discovered the jazz musicians, entertainers, writers, and artists who had found personal and professional fulfillment in Paris. Suddenly, France became a place where her ancestors shared an ongoing rich cultural exchange with the French. She finally understood why the welcome match stayed out to this day. Welcome, Julia. You for sure. The bonjour. hidden secret of bonjour. You for sure the hidden secret of Paris. Because before I met you, I never heard about Black Paris. And I never had any clue about really the the history and how this is connected with the Black Heritage worldwide. So let's just get started. Tell me a little bit about the amazing you and why you started this journey? Um, you know, just, just like you said, that you didn't know anything about it before. I knew very little about it before I went to Paris. I had been a literature major, so I knew some of the writers, but not in depth and didn't know much about their Paris experience. So that was not at all on my radar when I moved to Paris. I moved to Paris because I was living in Montreal and I wanted to change. And I had been living in Francophone countries for about 25 years and French was really my thing. So me and my husband, who was French, we went to Paris. But And so when we first got there, it was just everyday life, just getting by everyday life. And then I came across, as you said, um, I, I met uh, Michel Fabre, Professor Michel Fabre, who was mm -hmm. an expert, who is and was the expert in African-American history. And that changed everything for me. So why Black Paris? Because it made um, Paris suddenly not just a foreign city that I was living in, this beautiful pitch, a city that everybody wants to live in and that you're just trying to get through every day. It made it so much more, there were a his, his, my history, um, like black history all around me, everywhere I went, right down the street, across town, in places that I, I knew of, the, but I had walked past so many times, but would never have known. And it just made it feel so much more at home to me. You know, you yeah. just have a lot of history in one place. And I think even if you're in the United States, or I'm, I live in Canada, but even if you're in the United States, there's a lot of places you go where there's no black history or it's not uh, recognized. And here it's all in what concentrated in one small town, one city. Yeah. Well, and, and it always amazed me. Um, I'm just so excited that, I'm sorry, I didn't want to stop you. It's always amazed me like I know what you told me from World War II and Normandy and it immediately touched me because 
I could see these old spirits and these old souls, and I had no clue how this all is really connected. And then I met you. So why don't you tell, and like Josephine Baker, I see the picture of Josephine Baker behind you. Why don't you tell us a little bit before we really start niching down the topic, tell us a little bit about really the depth and the richment of this from, from an online perspective, really so small niche, but it's like, the content and the depth of the content is unbelievable. It's like, it feels like never ending stories and never ending articles. And never ending because there's always something else to discover, something, a contribution to either the French culture or, and in a larger sense, world culture that uh, black heritage has had, but it's not really out there. For example, the jazz, like people let know to, when they go to, to France that, uh, that, there's going to be jazz in the streets. There's going to be lots of jazz clubs, jazz festivals, jazz concerts, more than probably where they live. So if they love jazz, or even if they don't, you know, you get to it in a different environment. It, it sounds different. It sounds richer. But anyway, how did that jazz get there? You know, did the French just kind of up one day and start, well, here, let's try this new music. <laughs> it was the soldiers from the First World War who came in as soldiers and segregated troops. And as they marched through the towns and the cities, keeping up the morale of, of the cities and the towns, that were being bombarded, they played their music. And people heard this music and said, what is that? And they looked in the instruments and they said, how are they making those sounds? And so and the, so the French took that music that, you know, they tried to play it themselves. They didn't know how, but eventually it worked its way into the French culture. So now there's French jazz as well. So there's that strong legacy there. And, you know, somebody like Josephine, who's right behind me on the wall, uh, arrived as um, as a 19 year old showgirl. She was uh, dancing in the chorus, but within a year, she was the, the well, obviously the front person in that show at the, the Théâtre de Champs Élysées, uh, just a block south of the, awesome. the Champs Élysées Avenue, and became a huge star. But she wasn't content to stay a star. Uh, to be, she became a diva. She learned French. She became. She integrated into the French society. She was married three times, but she became a. Um, a, a spy for the French. She used her her. A spy. Uh, she spy. Yeah. She when she she was such a well known entertainer and so well regarded that 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 people like the Germans would tell her when she was traveling she would hear a uh, secrets and she would pass those on. She would carry messages in her um in her sheet music, um all all kinds of ways that she found to give back to the French for welcoming her. So whereas when she went back to the States, it was completely the opposite story. But she found ways to give back to the country that made her feel welcome. But she had so much to give as well. You know, she had ideas about a brotherhood. She could bring up 12 children of different nationalities and they could all live together. She wanted to show the world that that was possible. So she went, she was more than so much more than a showgirl. She was an activist. She was um, a, an entertainer. She was uh, you know, military, she got military awards. So there's a number, of, there's quite a few African Americans who came to Paris and then found that the talent that they had, it just worked well in France and it was accepted and they were allowed to, um, to develop it. Um, and so that's what creates that strong relationship between the French culture and the black culture. And that's where I come in and that's where people that come to France and learn about that. And even if you take a small tour, um, it's something that adds to your knowledge of the of the place where you are, but also um, knowledge of what the French appreciate and like, what the Black culture had to offer, and how the two came together, and how cultures can do come together in that way and enrich each other. So it's you know it's it's good for anybody. You don't have to be Black to enjoy it. Um, anybody can enjoy that, and because it, it's a universal theme, actually. I think what for me, do I want to think? And I'm German, so I'm, I'm not American. Um, I don't have a black heritage. For me, it's so amazing because I know the story from you from World War II where the, these American soldiers, these African American soldiers landed in Normandy and then coming to Paris, right? And correct me if I, if I remember this wrong, and how this changed a city, like, in in the war times in the war times they they changed more when they were out in in normandy and and doing 
their part that they were part of the troops there but they also had special groups like the red, red battalions the red ball express they had their own um contribution to the war movement out there and advanced it but it, it was in um in the towns and the villages where they met with the local people and and you know they changed the way people thought or what they thought they knew about black people, but in fact didn't know anything about them. So it, it, it was spreading that knowledge, that culture, as they went along as well. And there are, yeah. I mean, there are still ancestors still living there. Yeah. And for me, like, it's amazing. It's, and you, I know you forgive me that it's just this naive, very primitive thinking in, I think, where, where I'm from, Germany, and perhaps in, in the western part of Europe, like there, there was no African American we ever explored, right? And the first one, really, my parents met as children were American soldiers, so the, they really thought it's it's color, right? It's chocolate, and they could lick it or something. So if if I think about it, how people thought in these times, right? and how much impact just by this cultural exchange came to Europe and came to France and came to Paris. And then seeing this, what I do, search engine optimization, I'll help people niching and how we work together, niching down your niche. It's just amazing the what's behind a search demand, right? What's the, the, the treasure, the gift, the culture, what people just by typing in Black Paris, they don't know, they don't know at all. So then working with you, not only as an expert, but as an inspiration to go back in time and to work in their footprints and like to, I know from you that uh, Josephine Bigger, she had a chalet in Paris, right? She had a chateau in the just, chateau. Uh, in the south of France. Um, she had a mansion out, just outside of Paris, yes. So it's like, oh, I know from you, they are walking tours through Paris, walking tours to explore Plague Paris and, and all the, 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 like what you said, the, the artists and then the musicians and jazz and everything. It just amazes me because I'm so logical from my logical brain working with online niches for such a long time, for so many years, but then looking behind a very specific online niche. And as we met, you already started niching down your niche. You, you already had like the, the, the bus tours and the walking tours. And then the, is that the theme tours, the speciality yes, tours? Yes, we have theme tours as well, yeah. Yeah, and you were already successful in doing that. And then um, the question I wrote down for us today, really, and I think what our audience is interested to know, after you you started niching it on your own, just from your deep expertise, and like you live there, you, you travel there, you are there, you really, you breathe it, you walk the walk, you talk the talk. As we started working together, you, your goal was to get more leads for Black Paris, but also to be more well-rounded because we all know niches, they shift. And sometimes depending on the season, you have more demand or like what we explored now with, with um, traveling worldwide, right? Because really Black Heritage, it's in so many in so many hidden places in Paris, in France, in Europe, or in Canada. I know from you it's in Canada yeah. too. So what, what did you find was for you the most important or like the aha moments as we did this and reached out and integrated Paris and the Paris tours and then integrated all the different themes like uh, your food, uh, tour and your uh, painter tour. What what did you, did you find was the most important for you as an expert as we did this from a more online search demand perspective? Um, good question. Um, what I found first, the, what I found working with you and having to um, think about the SEO and mm -hmm. thinking about 
and 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 having already having the niche, but the uh, but thinking about it from an SEO point of view, um, kind of made me take it apart. Okay, so the question was, what would people be looking for when they're that sometimes you do, you don't even know what you're looking for, but they come across things. So what would they look for in order to reach um, you know, my, my business? Let's say you have a person who knows nothing about Black Paris, but loves jazz and goes, oh, let me see what's about jazz in Paris. Um, I have just, if I first started thinking about it, okay, let's just put it out as Black Paris interests and stuff like that. No, I have to peel it back and say, what are, and I learned from you, what are people actually asking for? So are they going to put in, are they going to do a search um, jazz in Paris? Are they going to do a search on literary figures in Paris? Are they going to do a search on um, uh, art or what kind of like art, unusual art or um, oh, unusual or, or food? Yeah, or food because big food because what kind of food do you want to eat in Paris? Do you want to eat just French food? Or do you want to eat, um, do you want to try African food or any other kind of food? So um, just trying to think of how how people might come from this from a different angle. But also, you know, one of the goals is not just to present a product and what's available, is the, the SEO also reflects the educational goal of, yes. of people. What do they really want to learn? So, um, for example, they may think, want to learn about African-American history but um, they also might want to know what is the French relations with blacks. And so that will take you back to the tours that deal, our tours that deal with the, di that include diaspora. So what, you know, the, the French, the, the black fr writers from Africa, the black writers mm -hmm. and, and, and musicians and, and that from the, the Caribbean. So as people start searching, that takes them out further and they'll see that we have, um, those possibilities in there so again just to go back to the beginning just finding what could poss possibly lead people to want to know what would they what are the words they want to know are they going to yes. put in put in to learn it is it going to be african writers in paris is it going to be um african music in paris is it going to be african-american restaurants is it going to be um um black art what, what is it going to be so there's so many different different ways to come at it to get to the same subject. Yeah. And I think what is fascinating to me is your very specific niche is Black Paris, but you are a Paris expert, like without yeah. any questions. Like you 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 breathe Paris, you you live there, you travel to Paris. Like every time when we communicate, you're on your way to Paris. And <laughs> it's not it's so it's so fascinating for me to see how you connect the old spirit, the culture, how Paris was 60 years ago, and what it becomes now, the modern Paris, and still connecting all the dots together. And I, I, I know your, your beautiful pictures, like where the teacups um, and um, just a painting on a concrete wall. So I think what it really is, and I, I honestly, I didn't realize that before we started working together, there is so much spiritual in your depth. There is so much what really is, is reminding us where did we come from and what do we do with this knowledge what how can we go back and like explore what josephine baker felt as an 18 year old 18 coming from united states to europe which was a totally different world like i think so contrary from the new world to the old world and by you leading me through the steps and explaining to me and like the team you work with, your tour guys and everything, explaining to me how I can absorb this now in 2016 or in, in the future. I think that's an unbelievable treasure to me. And to put it into perspective, to understand yes. what, what it was, like you said, what it was then, what it is now, what's the yes. what are the repercussions? And so my job is to, um, to explain that. And so to, to explain that and to make sure people understand that so that it's not superficial. So yeah. what I do is I, I'm continually researching. And so when you say that I'm traveling to mm -hmm. Paris 
traveling to Paris all the time. I do go quite, quite often, but then, yes. then I'm like, the, I w want to be the eyes and the ears of the person on the people on the road. Like I want to say, Hey, there's something new here. Hey, there's a Martin Luther King park. Now there's a, a sign for Leopold Senghor. There's, you know, this and this so that people have new things to come to, but, um, be their eyes so that I can, I see and they see, and they will see what I see. And I share that knowledge with people. So like a conduit, kind of thing yeah um we just had somebody training um yeah it's lucas lucas for this club session if you have a question just please type it in the the question bar with backslash and q and julia is more than happy to answer your question but this club show we really want to fully focus on um, hearing from Julia, hearing about her experience, hearing from her as an expert in her niche and also how she niched down. So we just want to be um, sensitive with her time. So if you have a question, just please type it in the question bar with backslash and uh, capital Q and um, Julia will answer your question. Or also she will share at the end how you can reach her directly if you have questions about Black Paris. So Julia, let's just, um, for the one who listening in or listening to this recording later, I really want to make very clear because I work with several travel agents and the travel industry is tough because it's very, very competitive. Travel agents normally, they compete with um, all the big travel sites or anybody who has a cheap flight or a cheap trip to Paris. And what I see for travel agents, and I see that totally with you, so more you can establish yourself as an expert and you, so more you can position yourself in a very unique niche where people cannot just go online and book something without having further knowledge about. That's really where I see the future of travel and the future of the travel industry is going. And by hearing from Julia's example, and I, and I will ask her to summarize it clearly for the ones who are in the travel industry, but also for the ones who are thinking about a trip to Paris or thinking about a trip to Europe or thinking about um, exploring their black heritage, what they really want to have in mind when they do this, because it's not, just going online looking for um, Black Paris tours or going online and looking for a trip to Paris. You really now these days, you need to have the knowledge. How do you travel safe? How do you travel with the, the, a conscious mind? Where do you go? Where do you stay? What to avoid? What do you want to do? Because nobody has two weeks anymore, only two days. So, yeah, <laughs> you can't see anything really, in two days. No, I really want that you share your why, that you share with all the niche in what we did and breaking down the Black Paris niche in uh, the different offers in your Black Paris walking tours and in your Black Paris bus tours and the Black Paris tours itself. And then broaden it to the Paris tours and Josephine Baker tours and Normandy tours really from your experience as a travel agent and from your experience as guiding your clients what is it what makes you so stand out so very successful because i see your your facebook uh, engagement all the time and people asking you and i know you have cds about black heritage what really makes you so successful what makes you so stand out what you could share with us where others can learn from or feel in which to work with you um i think well, I know people come to me or, and I encourage people to come to me because I save them time. I mean, if you could spend hours and days looking for something on the internet, or you can just call me and ask me to help you and I will do the work for you. So because I've been there many times, because I've lived there, I can tell you, you know, maybe not that neighborhood, but this neighborhood. And I, I can tell you exactly what's around your hotel that kind of thing. And I can help you plan it out so that you've got downtime and uptime. There's lots of stuff you might not know about. You know, there's, you might be interested in fashion yet. And, and you want to do, how do I do fashion? Do you want to do a tuk tuk? Do you want to get in a tuk tuk and go to, from one fashion house to another? There's all kinds of fantastic things. And 
that's my job is to stay on top of that so that you can get that without even thinking about how to get it. And it'll save you a lot of time, but it'll save you, you get great value from having somebody be your personal concierge. And then not only that, but we take care of you while we're planning, take care of you when you're traveling. So let's say something happens when you're traveling, there's a strike like yesterday, there was all those strikes in Paris. Um, how are you gonna get in and out of there? How are you gonna, what if you miss your flight? That all you have to do is call me. And that's the value you get of working with me. You have an advocate on the, on the other end, but you always also have somebody who is personally engaged, who really wants to make sure that you have a great trip. And it's personal to me, like really? I want you to have a great trip because I wish I was doing the trip that you were doing. So I kind of, I could say, oh my gosh, you, you're going to love this. You're going to love this after we've talked about what you really like. So, you know, you've got somebody there who's like, it's almost like the second you planning it for you. And, and I'll introduce you to things that you probably don't even know, don't even know exist. And I'll take yeah. care of all the logistics and all that. So, you know, it's uh, a lot of when you, you, when you work with a travel agent, who is an expert in their field, but who's also, you know, takes care of uh, your the value that you're getting. Um, you it's you win all the way down the line, and you come back. You don't even have to, you don't have to worry about a thing, and that that is yeah. the value of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think your value is much much higher, Julia. Honestly, because I'm German. I travel to Paris. I I had no clue what you were sharing with me about Paris, about Black Paris. I never saw that. And now these days, the last time I traveled to Europe was a year ago, right? And to Germany. Now traveling is something you cannot do brain that. You cannot just go and do it. So I really believe that you as a travel expert and travel agent and doing it, walking the walk, talking the floor, that really what makes you stand out, what many travel agents can learn from you too. It's not enough anymore that you have the information or no. the knowledge no. about, you know, everybody can read travel books and everybody in theory could open up a website and say, hey, um, uh, I'm the uh, Germany expert and I'm, can book uh, flights or I can uh, create a, a Berlin tour for you, right? If you never were there and you do this with your clients and they will land there, the reality will be totally different than what you can envision in theory. So I see people failing doing that. So it's, it's really what I see in our times with, with the internet and everything, knowing your niche, knowing and exploring your niche and doing the pitfalls and doing the mistakes and going through the customs and knowing exactly what, what, what needs to be done now to have a safe and secure and fun and successful travel. That's where you really totally come into place. And then being there, having an, an enjoyable, rich, um, inspiring time. So, in this blab, I really wanted to make sure that people realize that niching a travel niche and working with an expert like you is so much more than a service. It's not a service, it's an empowerment, it's enrichment, it's creating memories, it's having a more satisfying and more fulfilled experience. That, that is personal, that's, that's personal to you personal to exactly what you want because like you yes. said you only have so much time when you're traveling so you yeah. use it use it wild wisely but it doesn't mean yeah. you're going chock a block but it means that somebody has helped to plan it out for you but it's going to open experiences to you that you probably don't know anything about that is just going to enrich you for the rest of your life and that's yeah, where absolutely. yeah that's where that's where my expertise is absolutely because like you said um been there lived there boots on the ground all the time, constantly researching. And and I, I know Paris, but I know France. I have partners who know other countries. And so we work together closely in that, in that we know that our customers, our clients are going to um, are going to be working with a total expert and can rely on that. Right. And you live it in your heart. 
Yeah, like, absolutely. Every day. There, there's day no day. way. There's no way how you can, in my experience, right? There's no way how you can become a niche expert. You, you can position yourself as an authority in your niche and you don't live it. No. Like people now, they're sensitive. People now, they can smell when something smells bad. So it's really beneficial for people in the travel industry or for people who want to travel to, to Paris, to Black Paris, to explore their Black heritage, to really first think, what is the outcome I want? What is the result I want? And how do I want to get there? Do I want to spend all this time figuring something out? Do I, wouldn't, do I want to have a plan? And do I want to follow this plan and see who can fulfill my goals and the results I want to get in the most beautiful and the most satisfying way? And I, I really see this as the biggest benefit of niching because if I look for a European tour, I will get everything. If I look for a Paris tour, I know much better what I want. But if I look for a Black Paris tour with an experienced travel agent who lives there, who can introduce me to all the hidden secrets, uh, avoid the pitfalls, save me money, and make me more time by just having a great agenda where I really can see a lot without wasting going from A to B and being in traffic jams or whatever. That's where I see niching comes in because you know what you're doing and you your whole focus is to share this with your clients and to really help them to get the results they're looking for. That's exactly it, to get what you want and what you need out of the trip because it's not anymore it's not just a trip just to take a trip or just to get away it's a people to travel to experience and to engage while they're on site as well so right. so that they like they make friends they meet people they they engage in experiences that are going to enrich their life from now forward and that's what yeah. we help that's what we can absolutely that's yeah. not can that's what we do we make sure that that happens by asking yeah. the right questions up front and then collaborating all the way through the process yeah. and and that just to summarize it because we are at the end of our blog show and before i share i ask you to share um how our audience can reach you and if you have something special for us to offer just to summarize this so when you niche a travel niche you really want to do it with the mindset what Julia has to walk the walk, to talk to talk, to think about what is it what you are the expert in and how can you broaden it to make you put your eggs in several baskets and also how can you niche it down and specialize it more that you really have the answers to somebody else's question, that you really have the knowledge that you travel there and you know exactly what they can expect when they land and not mm -hmm. in theory just assuming oh everything will be fine because tell me how many calls do you get sometimes or how less calls do you get from clients when they are in Paris or in Europe and something happens because you prepare them already you have your oh yeah right right so it, it's all about it's the end trip is what the clients see, but it's all about preparing it and promoting it and marketing it and creating content in advance that they already, when they're there, they feel, oh yeah, finally, uh, I'm at the point where I can just breathe and be. Just breathe right. and be, exactly, because it's all, all, be. all done for you, but done for you in the way that it needs to be for you. Personal travel right. is, is very, very personal. Yeah, and you, absolutely. yeah, and you're not just out there in the world. You're out there making a world around you. Oh, I love that. Help you to do. That's what we you're help you to do. Out there making a world around you. Around you, yeah. You're engaging out. It's like the ripple effect. What you do where you travel ripples out and ripples out, and it comes back to you. And you come back and you share that with other people. And you're helping to build a, you know, a better world because you've understood yeah. people because of the experiences you've had. But personally, enriches you, enriches you personally. I love that. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to travel like that? <laughs> Julia, share please how um, 
Oh, anybody want to find out more about Black Paris, Black Paris tours, okay. uh, Paris tours, Josephine Baker, Normandy, the food, the artists, the jazz in Paris and the music, how they can reach you. But also, do you have a special offer or something what you work on right now um, coming up? Okay. All right. We are, our website is walkthespirit.com. So you go on there, you put down the, the drop down menus and you'll see some of the um, offers, that, uh, some of the different packages. We have individual half day tours. We have private bus tours. Um, we have great guides, of course. So you get to meet somebody in Paris from Paris, but we also have um, theme tours. So a jazz tour. We have lots of Josephine Baker because she's like everybody's hero down to the south in Paris, even in the United States. We work with travel agents, of course, and with travel agents, we help travel agents to see how they can integrate Black heritage into their um, customers' itineraries. Even if their customers are not Black, people are interested in jazz, people are interested in art, and they could, you know, create um, and get a adventure, a joyous adventures within their own communities with a jazz group or with a um, with a restaurant, and we can help them do that. Bring in an, an aspect that would work with them. So it's you don't necessarily have to go there. We work with people on site as well. Um, what I have a special offer: Black History mm -hmm. Month start. Black History Month starts in February, but you know for us it's Black History Month all year round, of course. You know, but. Yeah. Uh, for Black History Month from February the 1st to the end of the month, any um, walking tours that are booked, you'll get 10% off. Please just mention that you are on Dagmar's show and we'll give you 10% off the price. Perfect. Just a second, I'm right. And for the bus tours, the bus tours, which are beautiful because you get to cover a lot more distance, will take 5% off those, the bus tours okay. in Paris. Yeah, just a second. Perfect. And we'll also do 5% off for our packages. So if you book a theme tour, it could be to the south of France, it could be to Josephine Baker Chateau, it could be a pre and post shore trip. Uh, after a river, uh, after a cruise, five percent off. So just just say that you heard us on Dagmar's show. Perfect. Yeah, I'll just share that, and I will share it later when um, I share the recording okay. and the link for the show. Julia, thank you so much for coming on to the Blab Show and really enriching us about the beauty of establishing yourself as an expert in the niche and i know you you already were established as an expert before we met and then we broaden your niche you just to, to to make it more solid i would say because i would say because I, there was a lot of things i did not think about as far as you put up a website it's up it's done let's go but there is a yeah. lot of back end that 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 just from the front you don't know anything about a lot of technical that we we have no that's what we count on you for dagmar you know, just make sure we get in front of the right eyes, right? Let me just Thank answer you. that question. How far in sure. advance do you need to book a bus tour? Uh, I would say a minimum two weeks. It depends on the size of your group because it's it's busy and we only have, uh, we have so many guides. But um, yeah, at least two weeks would be good. But, we, you know, we take them at shorter notice if necessary, but two weeks would be good, minimum. Okay, perfect. And um, I think it's, um, okay. Just a second. Um, Kim has another. Do you see her other question? Yeah. Do you have spaces for singles, but only groups? Yep, we have singles. We do. Uh, it, th that's always a question. Like, do, are you do you just doing groups? No. My goal has always been, always from the very beginning, anybody that wants to take the tour, we are do our best because people travel solo. You don't always travel with a group, so we we welcome single people, like single that's travelers. Perfect. Yeah, and I I will make a, a special comment because I think that's for sure women a concern a lot if they don't want to travel alone, if they don't want to travel to Paris alone. Like if you so what you're doing, you're connecting them when they event. Awesome. Yeah, and and you know the thing about joining a tour if you're single and you join join a, a tour that's already scheduled. 
Mm -hmm. um, think of meeting all the people on that tour that are like-minded, that are interested in the same things. We have people who have met, who have, we have actually people who have become- They come back. Who have, no, no, we have people who have become couples because they met that on the tours. Fun. People who have made lifelong friends. Oh, it's, it's um, you know, that's, that's what they're for. You're sharing the same passion. And then you go on and you just continue on your way so, with those people. And you know what, what you just said, where in the world, tell me, can you find this on any of the mass travel websites? What happens after the tour? What happens in a tour? Like just, just by working with experts, it makes such a difference for your life, not just for whatever the four days you're in Paris. It just, it's for me a bigger, it's for me a bigger why and a bigger purpose to work with an expert who really can open this, this door to me. And like what you just said, if, if I'm single, and I don't think we have the single tours already on your website, that would be a great, um, great point to research that if there's a need for this, for sure, to travel to Paris. But like knowing this, that you will take care of me, you will help me, you will connect me with others, and it's worry free. I don't have to think about it anymore. It's not, it doesn't become a problem for me because you already have the solution available. Absolutely. That, yeah, my, yeah my, my bottom line, my, my goal is always to get people in, get people to meet each other, but also just to experience it. And you experience it by being alone sometimes, you know, when you walk through the museums. Sometimes you don't want to be with anybody, but you also sometimes experiencing by being around other people. So we try to, connection, that's, that's my job is to connect. Yeah. So at the end, and just then, um, as a last thought before we close up the blob, I think you can see by now how, what a difference it makes in the life of the entrepreneur to niche down their niche and really be very specific or go one step above their niche and integrate something if you're already an established expert. Or what Julia shared, how much it makes a difference to her clients because she's a niche expert and she really is authentic and she's real and she has the experience and the knowledge you don't have when you want to travel to Paris or to Black Paris or go on uh, Black Heritage tours or walking tours in Black Paris. So you really can see how niching in life, niching when you book a travel, really makes a difference not to go to any broad website who does everything and at the end nothing or to go and work with an expert. So that's expert. my last two cents. Yeah. Okay. Expert in Paris, expert in France, but expert across Europe as well. So London, yeah, yeah. other cities too. There's, there's so much to see and so much to do and so many people to meet. Yeah, absolutely. And with so many years of, how many years of experience do you have now? Oh, I started doing those tours in 1994. Can you believe that? That's like no. almost, that's 21, almost 22 years now. In February, I started actually. 22 yeah. years and Europe changed a lot. Paris changed a lot. Black Paris yeah. changed a lot, not from the spirit, but just, I would say looking in from the outside, how people communicate now. So, oh, oh my goodness. When we used to start, when we started our promotion, we used to send letters by mail to travel agents and things and it was quite quite a different well, this is wonderful i love i love the new technology it's it just makes it so much easier yeah. lots more competition Absolutely. but lots but it makes it easier you will always stand out julia like you are such an authority in your niche you you do what you say you walk the walk you talk the talk yep. you're like you're so ethical and high integrity so you will always do awesome so I know that and, and it's for everybody, it's a gift to travel with you. And for every other yeah. travel agent, it's a gift to know you because you are so rich on knowledge and experience in so many ways in, in business, in your niche and just life experience itself. So that's what I, I like it. To, I like it to work. I want it to work and I want it to work well for people. Yes. And I, I want people to have a good time. I like taking care of people. You know? I want them yeah, to have a absolutely. good time. <laughs> And I appreciate that. So thank you so much for coming. Do you, do you have one last thing you want to share before we close up? Um, 
no, I'm pretty good. I look forward to, to hearing from a lot of people about going to Paris. And don't be afraid to go to Paris. It's, you know, Paris, is, it's been, it, it's had its ups and downs, and I've lived through many of them. So where Paris is not going anywhere. Paris, the rest of France, London, even in Germany, Italy, everywhere. Just ask us how we can get you there, and we'll get you there beautifully. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and I just wanted to say that to, for the for the offer, I said, you know, you book w in February, but it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to take place in February. It's good, you know, to travel all of this year. So that's cool. Okay, right so when, 2016. when, okay, right so through perfect. 2016. So when someone is listening to the recording and they come to you, they don't have to travel in February. They just need no. to book it now. That's right. Okay, okay. perfect. Thank you Thank very you. much, Dagmar. Oh. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for inviting. You're really welcome. Thank you so Thank much you. for. Being our guest was a full pleasure. Okay, abiento. Bye. Bye.